And welcome to the um, Moonstone Matriarchy, a girl power campaign with uh, six sexy women that kick ass and take names both inside and outside of the game. Um, I'm Jessica, also known as I Sneeze Stars Online or D in Denial. Um, and I will be your shenanigan sovereign this evening. Very quickly, I'm going to run you through the games that we have on this channel, and then we will let the players introduce themselves. So, Monday nights, we have the Iowan Adventures at 7.30 p.m. EST, a D uh, Dungeons & Dragons game DM'd by myself. Uh, Tuesday nights, we have State of the Union, a Shadowrun campaign at 7.30 p.m. EST, GM'd by at Cottlesworth, uh, featuring both Katie and myself. Um, Thursday nights, we have The Lost Consonant at 8 p.m. EST, DM'd by Mr. Markham. And Friday nights, we have The Legends of Kralis, a at 11 p.m. EST, a TTRPG created and GM'd by Telerius Game Master. And obviously, tonight, we have The Moonstone Matriarchy. Um, yeah, follow us on, like, I don't know, YouTube and Discord or whatever. Uh, Delphra? Yes. Can you do the talking now? Oh, yeah. I was like, the way you said that, I was like, I'm in trouble. No, that's just my <laughs> what tone. What did I do? Uh, my tone. Hi, I'm Mommy Kalik, and you can't find me anywhere on the internet, so don't try. Uh, I play Delphra, a winter Eladrin. Um, Druid. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. Uh, and that's it. Clover. Me. Um, hi, I'm Juniper. I'm Linen and Spice, most places on the internet, uh, mostly TikTok, I guess. Um, I uh, also play Alien the first Sunday of the month over on Shattered Tabletop Games, if you want to go see that. Um, our next session, which is coming up tomorrow, is going to be our session zero for season two, where we'll be introducing some new characters, seeing what's happened to some old ones, all that kind of good stuff. Um, yeah. What else do I need to say? I think that's it. I think that's about it. Yeah, cool. Awesome. I will pass over to Scarlet. Hi, guys. I'm Scarlet. Uh, I play all kinds of TTRPGs here on Twitch and make content on TikTok. You can find me on Sundays on my channel, Scarlet64. I am running an Out of the Abyss campaign. It's two years in the making. We're coming up towards the end and gearing up for a season two, which I'm super excited about. I'm also the mother of Dessert Dragons, and I just got brand new stickers in. Uh, so you can find my new cookie dragons. I'll show you one of them. Uh, these guys and four other little buddies are now here for you to adopt and uh, they will keep your cookies fresh for you if you keep them in your pantry. So yeah, uh, Star. 
Hi, I'm Star. Uh, I go by Star Mama C on TikTok. I'm playing Cappy, a Herring Gone Wild Magic Sorcerer tonight. I always forget to say that. Um, I Yeah, you can find me on TikTok at Star Mama C. Everywhere else, I'm Characters Without Stories because that is the name of my podcast where I interview people about TTRPG characters that they haven't had a chance to play yet. And I am going to go ahead and pass it to Katie. Hi, I'm Dungeon Mistress Katie. Um, as Jess said, you can find me on Tuesdays on the same channel. Um, it's State of the Union. Pap uh, wow, I did that today. Uh, the opposite. Uh, Shadowrun campaign, um, which we also have a very special guest right now of the Scarlet variety. Oh, our... yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was muted at the time and I'm like, it's Scarlet. And I, was I like, forgot. I okay. forgot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I am in that game. She is. She's. It's awesome. I love it. Um, <laughs> Our characters' and, <laughs> interactions are so ridiculous. Funny. They're so top notch. Fucking top chaos. Oh. Just, when, when you when 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 your GM yells at you about not coding his penis, you know you're having a good game. Um, yeah, <laughs> that happened. You um, can't code so, my Katie, my penis, Katie. <laughs> he didn't say my name, but he was definitely looking at me when he said he it. He was looking I'm the one at who you. Said it. It's oh ridiculous. The most ridiculous person. Anyway, uh, on Wednesdays, every other Wednesday, you can find me playing a Power Ranger. Um, and then, on, oh, Jesus, things are falling. Um, <clears throat> and then on Saturdays, I'm here. Um, Wednesdays, a Shadow of Knox is the where I am. Um, and then the week of the week of uh, Valentine's Day, I'm they're going to be releasing um, a special little mini campaign that we're currently taping on Shadows of Knox, which, buff, which is a Buffy the Vampire Slayer campaign, and I'm playing a Slayer, which is really fun. Um, and do I do anything else? Oh, I'm going to start call, playing a Call of Cthulhu game soon on Sundays. It's 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 chaos. Um, and if I'm not here, I'm probably singing um, in operas and stuff. But tonight I'm playing a Rosalind Alara. She is a winter la a winter ladrin, regular ladrin. She's an ladrin. Um, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Uh, she has the best set of tits in the group. I think. Yes. We decided. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Canonically. Yep. Canonically, <laughs> Canonically she has the best set of tits. Yeah, and um. the jury's still out as to which set of tits within the group are the best. Um, they're all the best. They're all they're all amazing. So. All to no, you're no, they're perfect. I mean, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. I don't even do the like, like, like I'm a man. Like, <laughs> like I don't know how to do this. Yeah. So much. <laughs> <laughs> Hong Kong. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I expect it's gonna it. be one of those nights. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Maybe yes, I, I should really get it. Not even drinking like, yeah. yet. Yeah. I haven't even started. Oh shit. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, so that's me and that's us, and uh, here we go, I guess. Also, thank you, Squiggum, for that hand of fate. <sighs> I don't know what's happening. I need to get in the Twitch channel. Uh, it basically means that I rolled with disadvantage uh, for the first roll yes! that the DM makes. Yay! Excellent, excellent yeah! choice. Love that um, for us. So, I believe, Scarlet, you are on recap duty. Yes. Cool. Um... Let me get that thing up. Okay. Last time on Moonstone Matriarchy, the sisters made their way to the Tree of Lunar Delights, the nexus between your, the, the land that they're from and the land that which they are going. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking lovely. Where... They had heard a pack oh of uneducated werewolves had <laughs> lay siege. <laughs> they found the werewolves being very mean to their friend Arya and the Moros. So they kicked their werewolf asses. Though they did get a little ass kicking themselves, as a few of our sisters did fall momentarily, including our favorite little frosty bunny, Cappy, to which our little lizard buddy, uh, the Yulstice lizard, transformed into a very hot but morally questionable Archfey. <laughs> He's Faye. <laughs> Daddy December himself uh, 
and informed us all that uh, Cappy has been betrothed to him, uh, presumably since birth, uh, thanks to her no good mother. Uh, it was very strange information. Uh, and we're all still trying to di digest it. We're also trying to decide if we like Daddy December, because he was a little pushy and he doesn't seem to understand conformed consent, uh, informed consent, but we're working on that. Uh, in the meantime, our two other companions, Lady Orion and Lady um, really buff orc mommy, uh, Diana, uh, had also kind of gone off to do some fighting uh, and only Diana returned. So Sin went off to go find Lady Orion, who was standing at the border of um, Telem Telembrosia. Telem Penem Penem <laughs> Penembrosia. Oh, Umberfell. Same thing. Umberfell, mm -hmm. and was looking very, very sad as that used to be her homeland 700 years ago. And it is apparently changed, uh, to which Sin has no idea what the fuck she's talking to talking about and told her to suck it up, buttercup. We've got work to do. Uh, they <laughs> returned back to the party. Sin had a terrible dream about uh, Nixaria, her unwilling warlock patron. Well, she sends the unwilling one, I suppose, uh, who warned them to stay away, that she had the moonstone now, and we needed to fuck right off. Sin said, bet hold my beer. And the party is now, after saying goodbye to the Moros, who it turns out his, his purpose was fulfilled, and that was very, very sad, and we hate that for him, uh... He fucked off to the spirit realm when then we were finally met by our favorite blind dragon obsidian who now has a human form and we're still deciding if he's hot and romanceable. Um, so I'm going to give you a quick timeline recap and then I'm going to think we're going to start from you guys waking up because I forgot where we left off and wrote a bunch of cute things. So. <laughs> uh, one month ago, Moonstone was stolen. A week to retrieve the Moonstone. A week to end up back, basically, in Tembrosa. By the end of this, you will be back in Tembrosa. So you've been, you will be together by the end of this for about maybe two, two and a half weeks. As a party. So, here we go. Y'all wake up in the morning. Stretch, yawn. Is there anything anyone wants to do? Or what are you doing as you wake up? Well, I did promise to make breakfast for Fleety. <laughs> and I'm going to keep Ooh. that promise. So I'll make breakfast for everyone. Oh, no. You're already falling into wifey mode. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> I don't know what kind of wife you are, but I was never that wife. <laughs> nope. Nope. I, nope. I think no, i think happy is definitely is very much the person that is like cooking in camp and like taking care in that way she feels 100 like i it. love I, it i'm imagining a giant cauldron and a little step stool and this rabbit stretched all the way up holding oh. and stirring it like this and little carrots popping out of the stew <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we need art of that. That would be so cute. <laughs> Where's my tablet? <laughs> when you all wake up in the morning and you get up to make breakfast for Flady, you look around and he's gone. He is nowhere to be seen. In fact, you look around and also you don't see Lady Orion or Diana either. Uh, uh, Flady, uh, are you invisible right now? Can you show yourself if you are? There's no answer. I'm going to like look around to see if there are signs of tracks. No. I mean, there's uh, tracks around the camp, but nothing like that leads off. Um, you roll me investigation, actually. I can do that. Let me open up my character sheet because I didn't forget to do that before we started. <clears throat> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Almost. You do notice Obsidian is sitting with uh, Arya without the Moros. Obviously, he's comforting. He's comforting Arya. I got a five. A five. I mean, yeah, I mean, trucks around the camp. What do you, what do you guys do? Arya, Obsidian. 
Where did our escorts go? Obsidian hears you. He His head turns in your direction. And then you catch like a ghost of a smile up here on his face. And he laughs. A very deep belly laugh. And you see his tail point to behind the tree. Are they making out again? <laughs> Do you go? Wait a minute. Where is Anemone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I mean, if he pointed that way, I'm going to like look and see what's you, up. You get to the other side of the tree and you see Lady Orion. Uh, hang on. Let me see where I wrote this. You see Lady Orion uh, sitting at the base of the tree, her knees curled up to her chest. She's kind of just thousand yard stare. And in front of her, squatting and trying to and talking to her really in a low voice is diana trying uh i'm not even gonna make you roll she's trying to comfort her and snap her out of this mm. is there anything that you do or do you leave them to it? i'll leave them to it but i'll kind of like go back to the party and ask collectively do any of you know what happened? What the umber fell? I suppose it's not always been so umbery. Lady Orion seemed distressed. Said it changed. I don't know anything of it. It was before my time. Well, I thought it was because the prince was messing with some magic he shouldn't have been messing with. <sighs> yeah, that's what I thought. Why That's was the story he... you were told. But 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 why? I, I feel like maybe he told us. Oh gosh. I feel like <laughs> he told us why, or at least why from his perspective, but I don't I don't really remember. You'd think that since I... we lifted his curse, the land would be getting better. Well, I think it is, but just a little bit. It takes time, right? Um, if, if, if the, uh, prince, the cursed prince did tell us why he did it, can I roll a history to remember? Because I am not going to look through pages. I believe notes. he started to, but you guys were like not having any of it. Okay. Mm. So you didn't get like the full bit. He started to, and you guys were like, yeah, shut up. Oh, um. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we need to start letting NPCs talk. <laughs> um, at this point, out of nowhere, Fleety pops back into existence, um, with a bag that he's holding. Oh, you're all awake. Wonderful. I brought breakfast. <clears throat> Free, cool. of course. No, uh, no favors. Has Cappy already made breakfast? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> gonna you, I thought, you guys have, like, literally just woken up. Oh, 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 okay, oh, okay, okay. I was like, I think I'll have Cappy's breakfast, not the <laughs> Bay Archfey Prince of. Or God. you can have yeah. child them both. Like you could lay out your breakfast, and he'd like sit down and be like, "Oh, well, I suppose never mind." <laughs> I suppose never mind. I suppose never mind. I I did buy get I did bring back some winterberry pancakes and frost blossom honey toast and snowflakes goats. So you are so dog. insufferably fey. I'm not. I'm not eating food. Why? Thank you. Um, I said free. Clover will. Clover does... sits down and starts oh, yeah. serving oh. herself, like fully eating the face. No. Food. Yeah. You see him. You see him like almost like yay, and he's taking out things like he's got the pancakes. The he hands. He's handing you pancakes. The toast. Um. Let me just like explain. Like I'll say what they are. So. The fluffy pancakes are adorned with enchanting winter berries that burst with like a delightful uh, mix of sweet and tart flavors. The uh, honey toast, the frost blossom honey toast, is slices of golden honeyed toast drizzled with frost frost blossom honey, harvested under the light of the Yule moon, bringing a very sweet and magical taste to your taste buds. Okay, there are snowflake yeah, scones. Butter, buttery scones shaped like del delicate snowflakes dusted with powdered sugar to mimic the glistening touch of fresh snow. Um, 
celestial egg dog. Uh, he's like brought a freaking feast for you. A frothy and rich eggnog infused with celestial spices, giving it a heavenly flavor that warms you from the tips of your ears to your very toes. Um, and Yule Log Yogurt Parfait, which layers of creamy yogurt, winter winter fruit. Um, I don't know what, how to even say this because I looked up what was in yogurt parfait. I've never had one because I'm lactose intolerant. Um, Aww. like. Uh, oh. com- compote, compote, like what is? Compote. I don't even know. Compote. compote. Yeah. It's okay. Compote. Yeah. A compote. granola, like it's got. Com- yeah. Like, um, compote. And it's got granola resembling like rings of Yule logs, uh, topped with edible flowers and shimmering, sh- shimmering sugar crystals. Can Can Roz do an investigation to see if this is the kind of fey food that will like? find your soul later yeah all (laughs) fey food will do that unless said otherwise but he has said otherwise he has said otherwise okay so um so do you want to say that (laughs) no i'm just gonna have my own like i brewed some of my own tea i bring my own china with me and i'm just like you're so extra i love it (laughs) <laughs> I brought my own teacup. Um, <laughs> I have it on a little. It's, I feel like you have so it in like cute. a little thing, like, like on your side. <laughs> I have a little mess kit, and it's all yes. like, like beautiful porcelain and a little mm-hmm. like gold filigree. And I'm just sipping, like it's like my own mix, like mm-hmm. for a little tea bag. And I'm just like, yeah. And in my Please head, tell I'm me thinking, you have a teacup holster. You know, like that's those what I, yeah, leather. that's what I was yeah. thinking. Okay, I gotta add have. that to her art now. Yeah, <laughs> holster. And there's also a, her slutty book or smutty book holster there, mm. right there. It's just the nice. whole. Love it. We love that so much. Love um, the smutty book. It's Next. actually <laughs> the current one that you're reading is uh, the Archfey and the Princess. Sure. Oh course. no. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's why I'm reading this, and I'm like, I know the story ends. Yeah. Spoiler alert: the Arch Prince is yeah, not 100%. the protagonist. It's so. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, some people Ra- are into that. <laughs> Ross wants to sort of look at him and be like, <clears throat> "Okay, so here's the thing. That looks really good, and it is. I would like to eat it. However, it is um, snowflakes all over the whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to double check. And I know you said that it comes with no strings attached or no expectations, whatever. I just want to make sure that um." Later on down the road, it's not going to cause problems for those of us who eat it. If you know what I mean. He he looks at you and he's like, are you allergic to anything? No, no I just, they food in general generally comes with, in general generally comes with uh, side effects. Oh, I'm he knows. Confused. I'm. I know. He, he like. He's, no. He. He genuinely <clears throat> looks confused at this. I'm I just said trying. You could eat it. Right, but generally we have been taught not to eat food from the Fey Wild or from the Fey, just because it typically comes with side effects of the variety. <clears throat> I'm just making sure. Like, I really think it looks amazing, and I would love to eat it. You see but him? I, he just like. Do you think I'm lying? No, I'm not. I don't think you're lying. I, I think you do think I'm lying. I don't. I don't. What I don't understand I don't. is why. Because Archfey can't lie. Faye can't lie. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, but they also they can't lie, but they can mislead. Yes, and I'm just in did... the peanut. I'm just the peanut gallery, just like heckling <laughs> this whole interaction. He looks at you. <laughs> he looks at you, and he like there's a look up and down, and then he smiles and he goes, "The Archfey and the Princess." Hmm. <laughs> yes. The Archfey is not the protagonist. <laughs> I do wonder um, why you picked up that book. Oh, I've read the all that author's works. Mm. <laughs> of course. I'm just double checking. Um, I, she's going to just flat out ask, like, I'm just making sure that if I eat this, that I'm not going to have to owe my soul to anyone or... Anything you see like him, that. it's like dramatic, this dramatic sigh where he falls back into the air and just floats there and like puts his hand over his head and he's just like, oh my gosh, do you think I'm a devil? No, I don't collect souls. I collect favors and no, I said you could eat it for free. Okay, 
I'm just making sure because it looks really good, but I know better than just to eat fey food. He just shoves a <clears throat> scone in your face. <laughs> your fiance is charming, Cappy. Uh, I am so charmed by the like overblown like yeah. <laughs> reactions and all that. I'm not saying this. I am thinking it. Um, uh, He's floating beside you by now, Cappy, and he picks up what you've made and he eats and he eats that. What I've made is considerably more homespun. Um, it's very much like, too. yeah, it's very much it. like camping <laughs> food. <laughs> All your camping food. food. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You see him eat it, and and he gets a little like, you you know when you eat something that you like, and you're like, oh. that's what he does. my son up. does that. Uh-huh. When yeah. he eats something, he goes, ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so cute. I love it. <laughs> Delphra's gonna kind of like cock her head and be like, so why aren't you eating the food that you brought? If that's free? I eat this all the time and I don't eat what my lovely, gorgeous bunny betrothed has made for me. So, and he takes a big bite. Oh, dear lord. (laughs) But he does grab a glass, he does grab a glass of eggnog. (laughs) The eggnog is really good. You gotta try some, Delphra. It's really good. Oh. Um, I'm going to start loading up a plate to take round the back of the tree to uh, Lady Orion. So sweet. Yeah, you take a plate to back. Uh, you see the same exact scene that Sin saw. Um, uh, Diana is got a hand on her shoulder. She's squatting in front of her, trying to like talk to her, and she's staring off into nothing. Um, I I approach with the plate and I, I kind of hand the plate to Lady Diana and, and just say to them both, uh, Felidi brought some special Yulstas breakfast foods for us. He said that it's it's for free. We don't owe any favours or anything. <coughs> um, and I'll look at Lady Orion, who's probably still thousand yards staring, um, and just very gently kind of nuzzle her hand as she's got it like wrapped around her knees um i'll just sort of nuzzle her hand and lean up against her and do do that thing you know where a cat like rubs itself along you along you know what i mean do that thing when you when your cold nose touches her hand for a second there she almost she jumps like it's a little shock and she's like she looks down um looks at the plate takes it thank you uh, and takes just automatically takes a bite of something like she has she wasn't even thinking and then give me an arcana check arcana okay the, I swear to fucking god this die rolls nothing but threes so that's a four. <laughs> oh, she mm, looks so mad she looks more like she gets there's a, a moment of contemplation and then she makes a hmm this is this is rather good and seems a little bit better. He gets up. Come join us. We're all having breakfast together. Of course, yes. <clears throat> and she'll straighten out her dress and press the digitize off the mud and come and sit with you guys. If she'll let me, I'll sit on her lap, just give a bit of extra um comfort weight cat weight she lets Aww. you you even get scritches oh you guys eat together uh, is there anything you do before you take off no unless there's something obvious that needs to be addressed i feel like we would want to be snappy about getting our moonstone back when you're finished, um, Obsidian is like, well, time to go, I think, and transforms into his ancient void dragon form. Uh, with a rumbling, Obsidian extends his massive wings, um, each beat of them as he kind of flaps them for a moment, sends a shiver through the air, and uh, he hunches down for you, offering you his back to climb onto. Whoop. Side, side saddle. 
you're fully up there in a second. <laughs> um, Diana makes uh, Lady Orion get up there next. You all kind of pile on. Cappy, as you go to get on, uh, Fleety steps in front of you and goes, ah! Oh, absolutely not! Uh, you're dri- you're riding you're riding on his back. His oh. back. I'm sorry. Do I'm have... a dragon too. Well, but you're you're a, a little guy. I I, <laughs> I have <sighs> three forms. Thank you very much. The little cute one, this one, and and then he steps back a few paces and um transforms into an ancient dragon it's colossal it its sinuous form is covered in glistening scales that mimic the shimmering brilliance of freshly fallen snow uh its scales transition seamlessly from radiant white to icy blues and silvers uh creating a iridescent an iridescent sheen that reflects the ambient light with every movement the dragon leaves a trail of frosty sparkle sparkles in the air um his wings are expansive and delicate they're re- they kind of like remind you of crystalline structures they stretch wide adorned with intricate patterns resembling frost kissed feathers um when unfurled these wings will create a very mesmerizing display of when light goes through them of rainbow his eyes are orbs of just cerulean blue exuding very ancient wisdoms glowing they glow softly reflecting a warmth that you that make you think of cold nights in front of a fireplace um and on his head is a giant crown with of icicles with a very beautiful gem in the center. He puts his head down on the ground and looks at you. I think I, I'm just so like transfixed, but like this is, I mean, the, the way you describe the scales and everything, it sounds like so beautiful. And I think before even really thinking, I just like reach up and kind of just like, touch the scales um like I guess where I can reach would be like his neck or something like that before he puts his head down I'm just kind of like wow it's um sorry I this quite beautiful you can touch me whenever you like <laughs> I, I'm I I just I've never seen a, a dragon like you so up close it's it's really beautiful, all the color, the iridescence. I, I'm quite partial to that. Um, you I like can tell too. he looks proud. <laughs> he looks really proud of himself at this. Um, and when he like puts his head down, I'll, I guess, jump up wherever he wants me to sit. I feel a little strange, like being the only one. I, like It's fine, love. Be you and your fiance can get spend some time to get to know each other. Uh, okay. You hear, you hear Roscoe. Ride your boyfriend off into the sunset. It's great. I love it. <laughs> he, this dragon laughs and immediately, like it's a burst of just this sound, but it sounds like almost wind chimes. Aww. When he laughs, this like it's tinkering, it's bells and this form and that's what it leaves you with. And then together, him and uh, an obsidian hoist themselves into the sky with the amount of the amount of wind them taking off produces just alone sends the trees bending in different directions. And you raise into this sky higher and higher obsidian staying much lower to the ground than then uh fleety will he'll take off high so that you can see what um astelia looks like from the sky and 
so um so here's here's what you do as you travel in the center of the shadow lens shrouded in a perpetual twilight stands the desolate wait have i fucked this up no i haven't uh <laughs> stands the desolate city of tembrosa a haunting sight you've been there you know what it looks like that's what you're waiting to see come into view but in front of you sprawls a barren landscape it's once grand structures now abandoned and enveloped with an oppressive darkness though lighter than the last like less dark than the last time you were there it is still eerie and a silence still hangs heavy over the land as your gaze traverses the desolate realm below you please give me a perception check Nineteen. Hmm. Nice. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Dice. Okay. Okay. Y'all see. It. <laughs> I'll say someone probably points it out to you. Okay. <laughs> As you fly above Umberfell, you see many forms scurrying from shadow to shadow. Some even running after the giant dragon in the sky above them, and they don't look human at least not anymore sin as you kind of peer over a drop of water hits you in the face do you look around yeah I'm like is it rain one more one more perception check as you kind of look around for the where this is coming from I swear to God, if this is Orion's tears, it totally is. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, <laughs> oh my! God. She is looking at the ground above, like the ground, and just looks horrified. And every now and then, one tear will slip off and kind of fly her way until she realizes what's happening, and she puts her hood up so that they hit that instead. Huh. I'm still glued to her side, by the way. Like. She can't get rid of me. I'm Velcroed. This lady is cramping my emo style. Right? She is goth <laughs> mommy for a reason. Yeah. Uh, Suddenly I look like a ray of sunshine. As, um, so, uh, the towering black spire looms into view as you have been traveling. And I'm going to skip through this. For quite a while, hours, in fact. Crafted from the same dark obsidian that adorns the jagged peaks of the Shadowlands, the spire rises om ominously above the Forsaken City. Sinister shadows cascade from the towering form, stretching across the land like almost grasping fingers, weaving a tale of malevolence. The architecture of the Black Spire bears remnants of the once grand Tembrosan style. Gothic spires and arches now twist, twisted and warped by the influence of shadow magic. Hints at the fortress, fortress's grim history. It stands as a malignant beacon in the heart of the Shadowlands. Casting long sinister shadows. Like I said that already. Why did I write that twice? I, I was rushing. Um... And you land in the courtyard. Uh, Fleety will help get down so that you can get yourself off of him and then immediately pops back into his, his elven form. The rest of you, I'm assuming, get off of Obsidian. Mm -hmm. He bows to you. Gives his, um, as he says, as now affectionately calling you, Delphra, uh, his, his underwearless druid, a nuzzle, <laughs> and then sets- Commando druid. I give him, I give him a little, druid. I give him a little kiss, and then before he leaves, it's just like a little peck. You hear a little rumbling deep within his, his uh, chest, and then he takes to the sky. 
I'm not a bard, so Thank this is you. as far as it's gonna go. <laughs> That's fair. Um, he leaves. So you don't seduce the dragon. You don't no. seduce the dragon. No, that's Cappy's no. job this time. Yeah. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. Hey, I'll leave you, that to Cappy. Okay, that, that dragon is doing good enough job of seducing Cappy. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> you don't you don't seduce dragons. Dragons seduce you. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> um, when when uh, Fleety um returns to his elf form, uh, I'll just say, um, I don't know if I want you along. I don't know if I want your help in that way. And I I want to do it myself, if that makes any sense. If my magic comes from you, I, I feel like too much of me depends on you. And I don't want to depend on you. I, at least nowhere near yet. So... I want to do this myself with my friends. You boundaries, girly. Do you want to <laughs> inside him? Yeah. Uh, eight. Eight. Um, you're not entirely sure. He looks a little shocked. Delphra is gonna like kind of go up to them and just like throw her arm around Cappy and just like give him this look, like. We're bored. Go away now. <laughs> he poofs into baby Fleety and gives you these big eyes and then flies away. Disappears. Oh. He doesn't even say anything. He's like the it, little little wings and is like, you know, the that, like a fat dragon baby flying mm -hmm. where it's like a little mm -hmm. off-centered because mm -hmm. they're bottom heavy. <laughs> and they're being carried by these two little oh my god yeah. you hear you hear as he disappears and that's I, it I, yeah oh. i think like i say kind of oh. under my breath as he disappears like i i didn't mean it personally do i hear you say that you're yeah, right you, you got an arm yeah. around yeah. her yeah i just be like don't it's fine something tells me he's not going anywhere mm -hmm. yeah i just don't like I didn't I didn't want to hurt his feelings. It's it's not like I mean if he's he's you're not happy. He's very performative. I'm sure his feelings mm -hmm. are fine. He just wants to make sure you feel bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe you're right. <laughs> as you I assume go into the tower? Yes. So as you step uh, through the towering gates of the Black Spire. Yes. What did you want to say? Oh, I was just wondering if Arya was still with us as well. No, you left. You would have had to leave her. She's not leaving that tree okay. for a while. Fair. Um, the twilight yields to a dimly lit foyer, adorned with faded tapestries depicting, you know, the history of Tembrosa and such. The air is heavy with an otherworldly chill. Something that you can't seem to get rid of. And there are echoing footsteps that kind of come in and fade that you hear that you don't see anyone attached to. Though it is less foreboding than you remember last time. I want to look at the tapestries. Um, I'm curious if any of them are more recent in history because I, we're talking about where the shadow curse came from. I'm wondering if any of them depict any part of that story. Uh, roll me a d20. This. Uh, seven. With a seven? Um, I mean, you see a bunch of rulers of past of past uh monarchs and stuff but not you're not really sure they're very they're very the shadow curse has taken its toll on them faded and dusty and not upkept as well as they should have been so they're pre shadow curse yeah tapestries yeah do we remember when did the shadow curse start do we have that information i forget Roll my history check. Shit. 
I've told you multiple times. Now I'm I know. I know. Uh, 17. Hannah. 17. Uh, about maybe 50 years ago. Okay. So yeah, this would have. Wait. So does that mean I would have known about like. So, okay. I In the conversations I had with Orion, it was implied that the Shadowlands have always been like that as long as I have known about that. But if it was only 50 years ago, I would think I would have known. I think I'm older than that. Mm -hmm. Do you want to roll history? Again? I just rolled yeah. a 17. You're okay. So yeah, that's fair. Um, I was like, tell me something. 50 years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know that. Okay. So you know what? You know what has been put out there which is about 50 years ago the shadow the prince started dealing in shadow magic he um which is forbidden okay and even in tembrosa which is i mean umberfell is a land of the dead they are very connected to uh the spiritual realm um he started dealing in magics that were beyond him. And the story is that he was cursed by something he couldn't control. Um, and it started to spread outwards and he killed all of his people. Um, and to stop that, uh, Solstesia put up a barrier between that world or from that country to yours, which is the Moros. It didn't stop people from going if they decided because there were, again, some people from uh, the Umberfell were traders and they were in your lands and such travelers. So they didn't want to stop them, but it was discouraged. Okay. Um, again, you know that also Obsidian helped protect that barrier. Okay. So that was in the last 50 years. And Orion's reaction was to this kind of undead version of the Shadowfell. Mm -hmm. Okay, was a she. She broke down. Right, She'd never seen anything like it. Right. Before that, I mean, the it was alive, while okay. still muted in color. Every there were flowers and you know trees and things that weren't just dust. Okay, so yeah, my interaction with her was. I thought that Sin had only known the Shadowfell as a monstrous place, which is why she acted so kind of nonchalantly. Uh, if she is aware of how it used to be, I think she would have been a little bit more like, ooh, yeah, some shit happened, but hey, we, we're working on it. Yeah, it. I mean... That's in the past. Um, yeah. Maybe you can try later. I'm just trying to. Later. Yeah, I'm going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the grand entrance hall that you are in right now that stretches before you, it, it has lofty ceilings supported by imposing obsidian pillars, a grand staircase that leads to higher levels. While ominous, the doorways, you know, beckon expo exploration. Um, flickering torches cast da dancing shadows on stone walls. Um, a haunting melody seems to emanate from the within the depths of the spire. Uh, I mean, welcome to the and the grand entrance halls, guys. Uh, as you step into the hall, your eyes are drawn all over the place, and then you see in front of you a ghostly figure appears. Very mesmerizing. Uh, draped in ethereal, elegant gowns and, and uh, cloths. Uh, she seems to float weightlessly. She has long, flowing hair, as dark as the deepest shadows, cascading from her out from her translucent form. Her eyes a glow with a very eerie radiance reflect both sorrow and a glimmer of an intense emo emotion that maybe she carried over from her mortal life. She looks at you and says, what 
are you doing back here? Well, I don't exactly remember you, so what do you mean? Were you not here but two weeks ago? We didn't see you. Just because you didn't see me does not mean that I didn't see you. <clears throat> well, we are here on official business. Hmm. Is that so? And what business might that be? Well, kind of the same business that we were here last time you saw us. And then you see almost her, she goes from being very mesmerizing to almost, you get this shock of fear that goes through your body. She, her, she transforms just a little bit, looking menacing. Come to kill the prince, have you? No. No. Why? Did he do something deserving of death? He's a man, so. Did I say that out loud? You did say that out loud, and I'm yet sorry. I remember you flashing both your breasts at him. Listen, I would like to point out that that was before that was a, that was a before times, Rosalind, and I have changed. Mm. <laughs> like I couldn't keep it straight. <laughs> <laughs> Is one emissary not enough? Do emissaries usually travel alone without an entourage in these parts? That seems unsafe. They normally travel together. And they did, I believe. Mm -hmm. So who are you? Well, uh, uh, maybe I am Cappy, uh, Sirena. And what's your name? Give me an insight check. Yeah. Figured she might have heard that name. Eight. <laughs> Eight. I mean, you don't know why, but she looks annoyed when you say that. Um, she looks kind of, she kind of gives you this up and down, like, uh. And your name? Lady Seraph. Do we recognize that name? No. You don't know who she is. Oh. Are you a servant of the prince in some form? No. I, I smirk at that. <laughs> I am a consort. Oh. I'm so oh, sorry. I was. For you. Yes. <laughs> and you see, and yeah. you see her kind of pause and go, or I was until I died. Uh, oh. Did he kill you perchance? She just kind of looks, like looks up at her like the look that she gives you could cut flesh. All right. And she just goes, no. How many consorts are there? There was only me. And who is it I, now? No one. Oh, I was going to say, did the new consort kill you? That's, yeah, that's what I was kind of getting at. Like, did they need to make room for a new... I no! And then everything sort of <laughs> ladies, echoes. <laughs> None of this is our business, ladies. I know. None of well, this is our business. I mean, f forgive me, Lady Seraph, but it, it wouldn't be unwise to assume that the prince did kill you as the prince did kill a lot of people. His kingdom. Oh, nothing, moonlings. And then nothing. Tell us. us. Yeah, tell us. We are nothing tell if you. not students of the world. She looks at you and she sort of laughs a little bit. <laughs> and then she looks to, she looks up the stairs and she goes, sixth floor. Everyone is gathering for supper. I warn you, though, he won't be happy to see you, little moonlings. And then she fades into nothing. Uh, Delphra is going to, like, start walking towards the stairs, but as she's walking, she summons Quartzly, and he just, like, wraps around her. And she just sighs and goes, all right, let's get this over with. I've got mage armor up. <clears throat> you got mage armor up. You guys are getting ready for a fight. Uh, actually, um, do I just, have mage just, armor? Being, just being prepared. And if nothing else, we look real cool in our well, armor. It's... 
if we are coming here to re-retrieve the moonstone, it's if it is here, it's because he did steal it back. Um, and he's obviously not gonna want to give it up. Um, uh, maybe we should be careful. Absolutely. I'm, I'm actually starting to wonder if us retrieving the moonstone is I mean. Look, there's a lot of things going on at the moment that we don't understand. There are so many things that are nothing like what we've been taught. And yes, our country needs the moonstone, but why why would we take precedence over other people who might need the moonstone? Like, I'm not saying we should not talk about this with them but and explain what we've been sent here to do, but nothing is what we thought it was. I'm starting to wonder about everything. I think I'm going to pet Clover a little bit when you say that. Yeah, You're not I, wrong. You've got a point. I don't think we should come right out and be like, yo, the moonstone, give it back. <laughs> I was going to burst <laughs> through the doors like that. Damn it. Give yes. me the moonstone, dudes. That sounds like a shortcut mm -hmm. to a dungeon. Or death. We are here. Dungeon? What kind of dungeon? Not the fun kind. Not the I'm one so that afraid. you would like it to be. No. We are here on official business. Um, we are here as delegates of the queen. Perhaps we should suggest that we are here in negotiations to update our treaties and get some information. Am I still going up the stairs as they're all communing? I I'm assuming know. they're talking and what your guys are I'm not, walking. I am not walking up there until I know what I guess are. you're going on your own. All right. Oh, there goes no, our plans. Uh, oh, that's not. <sighs> oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> I run in front of Delphra, like catch up with her, run in front Let's of her. Let's at least stand be in front on of her the same say, page. Just wait. Let's talk about this first. Oh, I have to go down again? You can sit right mm -hmm. there. It's all right. We'll fill you in. Delphra well, just, like, plops a spot on the stairs, just, like... You guys run up to Delphra to talk? No, I'm going to stand right here. Sit on her, so you, you're just going to let this off. echo throughout the, the place. I mean, whoever wants to stay and, and plan this, and then we can fill in anyone else. I'm wearing heels. I don't want to be running back and forth. That's why I don't want to go back <laughs> when you, the when you say that, When you say that, Diana looks you up and down and goes... Have you been wearing those this whole time? Yes, darling. Mm, badass. You should see her calves from my eye level. They're really good. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I just would like us all to be on the same page so we're not giving contradicting information and getting us thrown in an unfun dungeon or possibly fed to some shadow death monster. Also... It's possible that the goddess Nixaria is here. Here's an idea. If they're on the sixth floor, that means we have five floors on which to potentially gather more information. If there's something here that can tell us more about what's happening, at least we might be able to come in more better armed, right? And I don't mean like like swords and things, okay, an enemy? I, I mean Perhaps it, it, we should separate, send Well Hey Delphra, do you like turning into things? Well, it depends. I don't know. The firefly didn't really work out for me. When you <sighs> when you start saying this, you see Lady Orion look at you and look deeply offended. So, let me understand this. You were sent here to get information, and you think that, what, going through the prince's tower alone without, invite, without introducing yourselves is the best way to do that? It's a very bad idea. Well, I was the one who was going to go upstairs and say hi. Just... Orion, do you know the just... prince is... Is he, uh, was he the prince when you were not imprisoned? No. Do you know his family? 
Maybe. Maybe if someone had told me anything about what we were doing, I might be able to help you. But none of you did. You kept me in the dark. Well, you have kind of kept yourself in the dark, um, sulking. But now that you're here, and now that you're with us, we can include you in our plans. You might be very useful. Apparently, this is where so you're I, from. I need you to make me a constitution saving throw. Uh, oh. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't Lady Orion in the room with 20. us when, when the queen conversation happened? Like when she actually yeah. told us what we were going to do? So like yeah, she and she just remind, yeah, she reminded you of what you were doing. What did you say? A dirty 20. Sorry, yeah, she's trying to put this. She's being antisocial and blaming us for it. I look, I am not taking this. You get um 21 is what you should have gotten. Wow. Uh you end up getting shoved backwards and encased in a bubble. How mature. And then she just kicks the end of it and you go bum 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 down the stairs that you had climbed up and into the wall and pop and it pops okay how much damage you is see that? her you see her just kind of <clears throat> and you need to take um 78 damage <laughs> so i'm going 78 to yeah give me one wait 7 d 8 or 70 7 d 8 Oh, okay. for every oh, okay. single game that I do, somebody Ooh. says 46 or 78. Yeah. I was we about to, to say, clarify. well, guys, I'm dead. I have to go re-roll a new character. See ya. She she rolled very low. So you only take 16 damage. Very immature. <laughs> so, obviously, we have a bit of an I'm adversarial relationship. <laughs> Yeah, my face is busted. I am almost dead. Oh, when I when she does that see... to you, um, you see Diana just immediately kind of like just shove her up against the wall. To that's hot. <laughs> yeah, she's got swords out in a flash. She shoved that's... her up against the wall with it. Yep, that's hot. And uh, she looks down at you and goes, "At least you're not dead." And pulls out a healing potion, a greater healing potion. I was like, you could be. <sighs> Sin looks like she looks kind of like it, this was very humiliating, obviously. Like she was head over feet, like her <laughs> skirt probably flew up. Uh, but she's also like that interaction. Sh she'll take the potion, give Diana like a look of gratitude and her eyes will flash at Orion with a look of trust is broken. Um, <laughs> you. I'm gonna roll for her to see if she understands what that means. Give me a second. Yeah. Is um, Obsidian well, currently this... dragon form? Obsidian's left. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's not here. Yeah, God but damn it, you're... woman, pay attention. Why did I think it was Obsidian? I am paying attention. Um, I'm writing notes. Damn it! I just Quartzly. missed mixed up who I was thinking of in the brain stuff. Quartzly's uh, gonna jump off me and curl around Sin. Just as like support, oh, she gives she gives Quartzly the the dagger. Uh, uh, how how much do I heal for? Uh, you potion? roll that. Oh, uh, it's forty four plus four. Forty four plus four. One, two, three, four. But ouch! She understands that look, and she goes, "What trust?" And then, uh. Oh shoves uh diana off of her orion you do remember that we are the people that broke you out of that prison i also remember that you were the people that did not warn me of what happened to my world we didn't know we did not know it had changed I think you have a lot of strong emotions and they are perfectly valid and there is a lot of grief happening here and it is well within your rights to feel that way, but please do not direct it at us. You really are. We are not cat. the ones. We are not the ones who destroyed your land, but we are I mean, doing our best to fix it. She, you see her, her fists shake, her eyes glow this bright neon orange as she's fighting to control that magic surge, and she has. 
And then fireball. <laughs> and then it all seems <clears throat> to die away as she locks everything inside. And you hear <laughs> and then there's nothing. Just gone. <sighs> I apologize, Sim. She just kind of hears her say that and she looks at her. <sighs> Rosalind, do I still have blood on my nose? Could you? Yeah. We're about so to meet would... a Let us There's... compose ourselves. Her yeah. hand, uh, Lady Orion's hand just kind of does a little twist and you're clean. And she presses digitizes you. And then she, <laughs> yeah, you break your own leg. <laughs> she picks up her skirts back straight. And walks up the stairs. So Roz You guys can walk- still decide what you're doing. Roz is going to walk over to Sin and sort of like get pretty close to her face and sort of tilt her chin up. And I think of- once, I think from afar, Sin, it, she always has this like slow composure. But I think once you're like close, you can see like the adrenaline in her fingers. And she's mm-hmm. just, you know, trying to. Okay. It, everything's okay. How, how hurt are you still, Sin? Uh, the potion was enough. Thank you, I Diana. Want to, I want to hop up to Orion. Um, you chase after her up the stairs. She's gone yeah. like a flight ahead of you. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop. Um, Orion, wait. I think you said that you didn't like that we didn't fill you in about this mm-hmm. about Tenebrosa, but. Maybe you should wait for us to fill you in about the last time we were here. Because our relationship with the prince, this is not a straightforward diplomatic mission. The last time we were here, we nearly came to blows with the prince. And you should know that. You should know because this is going to inform our conversation with him. And I don't want you going in there and talking about it like that didn't happen. Can you wait and listen. She looks at you, regards you for a moment, and then takes a step back and folds her hands. Just kind of nods. Last time we came here, the prince had the moonstone and we wanted it back. And I mean, inside check. Twelve. Twelve. Something flickers across her face. You're not sure what it is. He obviously didn't want to give it back to us. He said he needed it. And that very nearly became violent. But Clover cured him of the curse. And... That is why this land, well, it may not look like it to you, but it is better than it was before because of Clover. Now, that doesn't mean that everything was roses because honestly, I didn't think it was fair that he shouldn't suffer any sort of consequences for what he had done to our sisters and even to his kingdom. And he didn't agree with that. And we were essentially kicked out. Um, Rosalind did show her whole boob at him, and there were a few other. She things looks that at happened. you almost like you just you just see her look at you like what the fuck. <laughs> Let me just uh, you know, say that Clover is really helpful. the only person that has a good relationship with him, and that he probably doesn't like the rest of us very much, and we honestly don't like him very much either. So. That's what we're going into right now. Do any of you understand how to speak to royalty? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Do Depends you? on the day. We are <clears throat> acolytes. We are not... We are not ambassadors. We are not royal. We were sent here. I don't even retrieve... know why they sent us. It's not pretty. I, I mean... Why is it people don't usually speak to royalty to talk to royalty? It's not these 
they the wanted us to kill the they prince. Put on us. They wanted us to kill the prince. They didn't want us to talk to the prince. You're right. And if we died, who cares? Yeah. Right. We were expendable. We're In fact, I wonder Pretty if that's sure why we we're being still sent. are. Yeah, exactly. They needed to get rid of us. We're we know too much. Though. We Diana know. is looking at you guys and it's just like, I think we're going a little far. I think we're reaching. I wouldn't be here. Unless you, you were, were also expendable. expendable. Exactly. And let's just take a moment. Who runs the guard? We're a girl. For now. What? She it's... rolls her eyes. Orion used to have a lot more power too. And at that, there's like a little, like a sardonic smile as she looks at Diana. Perhaps you're out too. All right, enough. We're going a little far here. We're we're spinning out of control. Maybe if we're all on our best behavior, we might actually get the information we need. Okay. Okay. Well, let's stop talking about it and let's go. And Dolph just freaking goes. Just up. Uh- before I'm, I'm gonna like reach out a claw and put claws grab into her. your clothing just grab you do just, i not have a, like before. a leash yet not yet no you will be getting that soon oh, yeah. <laughs> oh i am making you a kitty leash <laughs> please do a little harness a kitty leash leash for me or for clover for you kitty k-i-d-d kitty baby like a toddler leash oh yeah like a, a harness. Can I have like one of those backpacks that's like? Yeah, you're getting a little bumbalina backpack. Yeah. <laughs> so do you want to do the talking since you seem to have more experience? Me. With royals. Or Sin. I'll do it. Or who? Who? Or I'm we talking, talking to Orion. No. Uh, Sin said that to Orion. You said that to Orion. She's asking if Orion wants to be the one to speak since she seems to disapprove of our methods. How about? You just learned some manners. I know you must have been raised with them. Especially with who your parents are. If I'm going to learn manners, it's probably not from the woman who just threw me down the ch- stairs like a petulant child who had her feelings hurt. I will okay, end ladies. your life. And she is just, ladies, her, all of that just flares up. I'm just more. like, you are proving my point. Everybody Please. stop. Everybody stop. Her hands are alight with just orange power and she's just like She took looking a level at... in Barbarian. Jesus okay. Christ. <laughs> okay. All right. Just everybody just take a moment. We are about to walk into a room with somebody who we very nearly came to blows last time. Just before Last time we went in there, we went there having been given the information that he had essentially stolen the Moonstone, that he was responsible for the deaths of everyone in his country, and that he was a bad, bad person. Now, let me just remind you all that everything we've ever known about religion, about our gods, everything is different from what we have been taught. Perhaps everything we were told about the prince is also up in the air. We don't know what happened. We do not know. It is quite possible that he is innocent in this situation and we went in there last time assuming he was guilty. We don't know. We are here to gather information. And perhaps we should be gathering that information with an open mind. Now, with that given, how should we proceed and who should do the talking? Clover, you I'll should do, do the talking. Clover. <laughs> you should. Yes, I think Clover is the most diplomatic of all of us. Delpho just kind of like looks like offended by the look um, Rosalind gives her. 
uh, Orion looks at you and just goes, you should never do the talking for anything. <laughs> and Delphine just sticks her tongue out at her, just like hands on hips, like. I, I do, I've never, I mean, aside from last time, I've never spoken to royalty before, but I'm willing to start the talking. Maybe if I start the talking and set the tone and then we go from there. He has every reason to trust you. And I, I think, honestly, you're a little bit more mature than the rest of us. Oh, excuse that, me. That, that, like, that little, this is a little, <laughs> that's from uh, Lady Diana, or from Commander Diana. <laughs> She's like, yeah, you think? And, um, and, and I, oh. as I say that, I look at Orion, too. Oh, she bends down to that your eye level and she goes I just found out my entire family is dead and everyone I've ever known has been wiped from the face of Estelia and you expect me to be okay no, no one I've been locked okay. in the room for 700 I... years no one is expecting maybe you, to you be okay. shouldn't have come because You're a little that is distressed. true and you have every right to be angry you do not have a right to hurt your allies allies yes the yeah. same allies that i've been traveling with for the past week and have said nothing to me of this do you need to wait the outside? same allies <clears throat> that i have spent nights with around the fire that ignore me we the only one that would be nice to me single day. is the cat we wouldn't be ignoring you if you didn't constantly think that you're better than us i think that i'm better than you no I just think that I have been through much more than you, and I understand the world maybe just a little bit better. Yeah, well, I wish we I could have understand a conversation the world about more. Cappy? Do we want to have a Were you there? Were you, were you around for any of the Cappy conversations? Because I think maybe don't compare trauma. I know yours is awful, and I'm sorry. I'm, I feel awful for you that you went through this. But you saying that diminishes what other people have gone through. She we just blinks trauma. in your direction. <laughs> I know, but we don't compare trauma because what's... I'm <sighs> sorry if it seems like we ignored you. That was never the intent. There's that moment where uh, you see her fight her emotions and then it's blank once more. She's not exactly she just forthcoming, is she? No, nope. but then I say we're this to Rosalind. To yeah, also, she's been locked up for seven hundred years by people that she trusted and counted as sisters. Your people. We understand. Do you think, do you think that she? Do you think that she is going I, to be forthcoming? We also stood up for her, put our own lives on the line, and now starting her, to regret that a little bit. Like we freed her ass. The moment that you freed her. She asked to stay with you because she was nervous that she might disappear again. And you, Aurora, you, Aurora, said, I don't think so. Can you just go wait somewhere else? Yeah, we needed time. This was traumatizing for Sin. Very traumatizing to find out that she's uh -huh. being punished for something that she shouldn't be punished for. But she's but been trying to be polite to her and she feels very like, okay. Maybe. Have you been? I need you to go watch back the episodes and yeah. see if you've been trying to be polite. That was she totally her being was polite. on her knees, looking out at her dead country, and you went, "Well, let's go." <laughs> and you think you've been this polite is, to her? But that's why earlier she, in the session I said, "Oh, this is a, a misunderstanding." Unfortunately, unfortunately, you made those decisions. Once I had already given you all of the information and still decided to act that way, because you don't remember them, that I can only do so much. Okay. There has been. You did beauty. that. You you wanted to repair the relationship. You're not getting there. That's not a no. That's not that you can't do it. But she is not well. No. But she picked up her skirts. I felt let the cat talk. 
Um, I kind of feel that Rosalind would walk over and sort of hesitantly try to take a hand or maybe both if she'll let me. Uh, give me one second. Yeah. You got to reach for it. You take them. But she looks at you and she goes, please don't. Okay. And there's there's a crack in her voice. Like she's not, she's not going to make it through this. Okay. And she sort of does this, like, I'm sorry for what you've gone through. And I'm sorry if it feels like we've brushed you aside. We will try to do better in the future. She nods. She goes, thank you. <clears throat> and I apologize for my behavior. And she looks at Sin. Hmm. And then her lips tighten. <clears throat> Guys just not getting learn. along. Something oh no! You're gonna learn about she that almost one. died. No. She's she not letting that go. Yeah, she doesn't. T- she doesn't <laughs> immediately forgive. Yeah, not a thing. Well, it Something just feels like like she doesn't know if it's a real <clears throat> forgive. Uh, real 100%. apology. Yeah, there's that. Yeah. Do you want to make an be... insight check? No, I think that it, it would be more natural for like over time to to observe. Fair enough. Fair enough. So she's going to give her a little little smile and walk away. She's listening to you guys. She's just trying to keep it all in. There. Yeah. So do we go? Well, shall we? Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Gone. Uh, Diana is going to catch up to Orion and and almost like be there as a bodyguard, not a bodyguard, but to make sure that she doesn't pull some shit again. Um, you can tell her. Sh- you can tell she's in guard mode. <clears throat> uh, and you guys, let me just open this again. I'm in the wrong place. Uh, I'll tell you what you go by as you go step by step. As you're ascending the stairs, you see the second level. You see that throne room that you were in. Uh, The third level, as you walk up, there are a bunch of uh, rooms, like sleeping rooms. You maybe think that maybe they're guest quarters. Um, There's a chamber that you're not quite sure on the fourth level what it is. But you get the sense that maybe you shouldn't be in there unattended. Um, have there been any like servants or courtiers or is this place like completely desolate? So like, far, a the only person that you've met is the ghost. And she said okay. they're, they, she said when you got there, they're, they're gathering for supper and that's it. Um, on the fifth level, you see a library and on the sixth level, let me go back to my notes. Can I ask you real quick? You said on the fourth level, we get the impression that we shouldn't go in there. <laughs> what, what gives us that impression? The aura of the room, the very like it feels. It feels to you. Um, Actually, give me an arcana check. Nine. A nine. I mean, it's just kind of scary. Like. It's dark. There's shadows that look like they move. It there's it's just it's just weird. Okay. It's the vibe is off. The vibes are off. <laughs> so there's some torture sounds in the background, someone like screaming. No, it's, no, please, the no. problem is it's dead <laughs> quiet there. Like so silent, it's eerie. Okay, um, yeah. Let's let's skip this floor. <laughs> When you guys get to the sixth floor, you, there are these grand um, doors in front of you that you open and step through, unless you want to do something beforehand. Who is walking in first? This is my question. Uh, that would be Clover, apparently. <laughs> Absolutely me. That hand shot up so fast. Okay, fine. I want to hear you walk us through how if you got to go first how it would go <laughs> i'd literally burst through the doors and be like what's up dark daddy 
That's why Clover's going in first. <laughs> Clover goes in first. Um, Damn. Lady Orion and Lady and Commander Diana go in behind her. Um, and as you step into the luxurious embrace of the Grand Dining Hall, uh, on the sixth floor, you your entrance kind of the first thing you see is a sprawling table of polished obsidian that extends into the room uh it's so long like you're like who needs a table that fucking long but there are silver candelabras placed meticulously throughout down that cat uh fuck me i'm i've i've hit the drunk um <laughs> that there are uh meticulously placed um at intervals on the table uh casting flames that dance with a beautiful glow while a delicate crystal while delicate crystal goblets capture the light of that and kind of reflect it uh the air is suffused with an aroma of just it smells so good guys the food smells amazing um Whoever made it is top notch. The table itself is strategically positioned towards these towering w- windows that reveal a very haunting panorama panorama of Tembrosa below. Um, a very like an ever present reminder of the castle's link to the Shadowlands. High back chairs exuding both a very comfort comfort feeling and like regality await you um it's a big difference between turning walking in from like the outside of that room to this room inside here it's soothing there's a glow uh there the ambience is is comforting um and the room is full of people uh standing and speaking to one another off to the side before as before taking a seat for dinner are a bunch of different people uh the npc uh, the npcs the prince be one of them uh with his shock of hair much brighter than you red hair much brighter than you remember it to be um he's standing among them and for once he doesn't look wicked to you he doesn't look scary he's he looks actually quite handsome he, he looks like a handsome. red-headed timothy chalamet <laughs> Kind of, right? <laughs> and he's standing just buff, not so skinny. Uh, he's standing with oh, like someone <laughs> and he lets his head, like he he's standing with someone that says something to him and he throws his head back and just like lets out a full belly laugh and kind of does the the Chris Evans thing where he like grabs his chest and then grabs that guy's chest and he's like, <laughs> and, and it's just like cackling, right? Mm-hmm. Like full... For the first time that you have seen him, he uh-huh. looks he just looks like a person having a good time. Um, and then you see your ghostly little friend appear beside him. And she says something to him. And he looks at her confused for a moment and then looks to the door where he sees you. And his demeanor immediately changes. Uh, it Everything disappears mm-hmm. and he's solemn again. And then, Cappy, you see someone that you know walk towards him. Your mother. Oh, no, 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 no. Strides across the room, stands next to him, giving him a dazzling smile. And he just outright scowls at her. Mm. Fully just like, so, oh, fuck off. So we like, like him. You can, you can points, for, him. points for him. <laughs> Let me describe what Maisie's mother looks like to you guys. Uh, so Maisie Serena is known as basically the Fae Blade of, of Solsticia. Um, she's got a very imposing presence with her six foot tall stature. She's athletically built, um, which is just a testament, a testament to her decades of martial prowess. Um, her hair cascade is cascading down her back a pale blonde that frames her face with uh very delicate features her intense blue eyes 
are very uh, captivating. They draw people in when she looks at them. And uh, right now she is giving the prince her all. You know, that look of come hither. Ew. Yes. Ooh. She is a pale elf. Striking beauty. Absolutely draw dropping. Uh, jaw dropping but fake as you all know very fake the room quiets as people begin to notice you their previous frivolity evaporating in an instant what do you do do we notice that cappy is noticed because we wouldn't recognize her mom right no you would not yeah do we know do i notice cappy what are you doing I think as everybody's walking in, I don't, you know, nobody's like noticed her or anything like that. And so people continue to walk, but I stop and I freeze. Does she see me or is she still too composed with? She has not spotted you yet. She's still looking at the prince trying to talk to him. And he's just like, I hate this bitch. That is the vibe you're getting from him. Um, It's good taste. Clearly. In that moment where you freeze and like that panic kind of sets in to your chest, you feel something crawl through your hair at the top of you, and and uh, Fleety's head pops oh. down. Oh, I I heard I felt I saw spiders in my head. <laughs> Do I see this? Uh, you. I mean, everyone. She stopped, and you guys kind of moved ahead for a second. Yeah, and I think like mm-hmm. I stopped, and I I just kind of went like, <gasps> you know, like a gasp. Um, as I saw her. So you might have heard that gasp. Hey, you hear, do I hear that gasp? Yes, you probably do. And and you oh. also probably hear a fleety say to her, don't be scared. I go and protect you if you need it. If but also only would... if you only if you go down. I promise. Only if you go down. I won't interfere otherwise. Delphur just kind of like looks and smirks and, and says to Kathy, I told you he wouldn't be far. I'm not far. But also, I don't want to leave you. Okay, so so Fleety, actually, I, it actually might be good for you to be here when I get a chance to talk to my mother. Because, honestly, <clears throat> you were part of that decision. It might be nice to have somebody else there who was there so that... Especially because you can't lie, and she can. She very much can. I'll never leave you. But but right now, like I said, I I do. He, I do want to do this alone. You hear a little or with poof, my friends, and you feel him disappear. Would we have heard her talk about, like, talk to Fleety? Yeah. And, like, yeah. okay. So Roz is going to be like, I'm so sorry. Did you, did you say mom? Yeah. She is the <clears throat> tall blonde talking to the prince. Uh, she's and- just going to grab a, a, a dagger. Not to do anything with it, just to, like, have it. She needs to, like, have something to hold on to that it's, is. This is diplomatic it's around- wrestling. <laughs> It's not it's, it's not like it's not like she's readying to hurt someone. She doesn't want to like look like she's coming in with daggers, but she just like needs to hold on to something like physically to like as a comfort thing, kind of like a kind of like a, a comfort teddy bear or something, just to like make sure she's got a comfort dagger. <laughs> <laughs> Emotional support. We call dagger. him we call him Mr. Sharp. Uh... <laughs> Mr. Pointy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pointy is her emotional support dagger. <laughs> that is canon at this point. <laughs> it's, um, it's around this time with the quiet of the room and everyone looking at you that your mother stops and <clears> looks <throat> across the room uh, and sees you and her f- smile falls. And As her smile falls, Quartzly hisses at her. He does. Um, and it's at that moment where you hear... Cappy from about two different voices as these two very similar looking blonde males come rushing over and pick her up and begin to 
huddle her and like noogie her and be like oh where have you been and they're kind of shaking her just a little bit uh your brothers you good yeah. Yeah. And oh. have, <laughs> have found you yeah um yeah i definitely i'm like hugging them back i'm letting them give me the noogies like i am like very very happy to see them um, norna leans in and just goes and like right to your skull just goes mm, <laughs> oh little sister the other one is like got your cheeks and they're just being they're just they're just all over you giving you love um before they realize they should probably pick you down yeah yeah definitely um I think, yeah, I think I'm I'm kind of like, I don't, I know that they're with my mother and there's something that I like resent them for that. So there's like a little bit of like, I kind of, after all of this, like, you know, warm welcome, I, I kind of break off from them a little bit and get a little bit quiet. And then you hear, it- Torna looks at Norna and goes, oh, she's quiet. She's quiet. That means she's shy. She's being shy. Um, and then and then Nor- uh, Norna's like, <laughs> it's funny when she's shy. Look, she's shy, mom. She's shy. <laughs> so uh, Roz is going to lean down to Cappy right in her ear so that no one else can hear it and say, do you want me to, do you want me to seduce them and then break their heart? I, I would do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I laugh. <laughs> Um, not quite yet, but keep it on the back burner. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, 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 <laughs> uh, you know, it's not a bad idea. Okay, yeah, one or both. I'm I'm happy to do double uh duty. <clears throat> uh, Oof. Yeah, <laughs> are you sure this is for Cappy or is this for Rosalind? I mean, <laughs> well, <laughs> two things can be true at once. <laughs> Uh, Uh, I'll leave that up to you at this point um, oh should I describe the twins to you guys yeah are they hot uh, (laughs) you can look look in the the, the NPC chat Oh, they're like the blonde Weasley twins (laughs) it's legit (laughs) so Torna is tall his frame is a very t- testament to his discipline training. Um, and he's elegant because obviously he is of the high elf lineage. Um, his short blonde hair is styled in a very warrior type cut. Um, practical yet suiting the chiseled features of his face. His eyes are a piercing blue that carry a very light hearted gleam. Like he never takes anything seriously. Um, they showcase his optimistic outlook on life and sometimes you know his naive cheerfulness uh he carries himself with a balance of both like a formidable strength and a warmth that disarms almost everyone because they don't expect him to be so endearing um norna mirrors his brother very much torn uh but in, in, like, height and athletic build, but he carries a more thoughtful expression. Uh, his short blonde hair is just a shade darker and is often tousled from training in battle. It looks like it's probably never in place. Uh, his blue eyes, while also kind, flicker with a bit more... a bit more intelligence than his brother, do- his brother does. Um... And his smile is very easygoing and charming. Uh, Those are your twins in front of you. At this point, the prince has brushed off your mother and is striding towards you, meets you at the door. You've only come in just a little bit. Why are you back here? I do a bit of a bow slash curtsy, however a cat can do that. Meow. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> when you do Love that, <laughs> he kneels and puts out his hand again. Oh. I... 
<laughs> above the table. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do here. Um, I... He's he's waiting to see if he can scratch your chin. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In that case, I will go up and gently do a cheek rub on his hand. Yeah, and you get he scratches your chin a little bit Aww. before he he uh, stands back. <clears throat> And he looks at you and he goes, you're always welcome here, little one. Thank you, um, your highness. I wish I was here on strictly happy business. Um, but my sisters and I have been sent to talk to you about... Uh, again about the moonstone uh, he, he looks confused are we is I, I, know, I know we're interrupting your dinner I'm very sorry Is do you have time to talk to us or shall we wait a little roll me persuasion and I'm going to roll something oh. for him Cat, move, please. <laughs> Dude, thank you. Persuasion. Another fucking three. That's a five. I am never Stop using that again. dice. Yeah, Stop using that down. dice. You know what? It's gone. That dice doesn't count anymore. Use a different one. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. I'm. Oh, I'm so annoyed because I love that die. It's so pretty. Okay. Maybe it'll yeah, we're going to get you a it'll... necklace for it and you just wear that one now. Don't Actually, learn it. It'll idea. learn its lesson. All right, I'm using I'm using the one you sent me, Jess. Let's see how that goes. Please, please. That's a bit better. That's a twenty twenty one. That's a better, lot better. A bit better. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit uh, better. It was a natural. New 20. favorite die. <laughs> he looks at you, and he looks over to an elderly butler that's there. And uh, actually, let me get my NPC list out. <clears throat> and he. Or not. That's cool. That's fine, too. You don't have to open. Whatever. <laughs> Nobody needs you. Um, <laughs> he... Where's the butler, 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 butler? He looks to a butler and he goes, Roderick, could you bring some more chairs? And plates. And uh, And then he looks back to you and he goes, perhaps after dinner. Thank you. But he does gesture for you to sit at like the front of the table with him if you wanted. Yeah, definitely. For all of us to sit with him, like near him, or there's a moment where he looks at all of you and you can you can see him internally sigh <laughs> when his eyes especially land on Rosalind. And and for just a second, for just half a second, he looks, his eyes flick down, and then he looks, like, up at the sky. <laughs> she just kind of, like... <clears throat> you do that. You raise your arms, and you kind of do a stretch, and he's, like, he's looked away. <laughs> completely looked away. Uh, and and nods for all of yeah. you. <laughs> and, and and almost, and looks at you and just goes, please, sit at the front, Moonlings. <clears throat> as, uh, as... <laughs> Cappy's mother goes to take a seat near the front, near him. Uh, please, 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 please take a seat. Please take a seat. Take a seat. Take a seat. Roz is um, going to sit next yeah, to him. Sit down. It's oh, you sit next uh, to him. Yeah. I'm going to sit just... in the spot that Maisie was going to sit in. <laughs> yeah. So she was going to sit at the left-hand side. No, you run I'm up and you right. sit there. I'm in his right. Sits on his left. Yeah, I, I sit. I like floof up my little thing and I pull out on my holster I have my own wine glass <laughs> <laughs> um, of course you do <laughs> everybody joins you uh, it's like gilded around the edge it's yeah. like very nice it's a family heirloom I, I like to imagine that like I sit down and then all of the people in the party like sit in the places my mom is trying to sit so. yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> that time. That. and that she goes like, from chair to chair yeah. yeah. exactly yeah <laughs> Uh, in fact, I feel like if she gets close enough and looks like, like, because she was trying to sit there and I sit there first, uh, there's like a bit of awkwardness and I'll look up and I'll go, oh, no, I don't need a bodyguard. Thank you. Oh. Yes. <laughs> there is a moment where she just 
sneers at you and then I look so innocent like oh I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> and then she goes and takes a seat uh at the end of the ta- not the end of the table but like uh at the end of you guys is where uh Diana and uh Lady Orion sit and um as you all take your seats, everyone is sitting with you. Uh, do you want me to um, tell you who is there or like explain them to you at all? Yes, please. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. So this is who you see take a seat. Um, there is, there's a woman with, there's a beautiful el- elven woman with uh these gold rim glasses on she has red hair that's wavy and looks soft and luscious that's in a half up half down do she has these uh beautiful green eyes and she come she looks at you before she sits and she looks mainly at rosalind and then just goes you see her kind of like reevaluate where she was about to go and sit and then go and sit further down without complaint but just confusion um oh no oh no i made the girlfriend mad and then uh across from her is a a human male with um a very uh, like a little bit of, of gnarled visage uh, he's got a, a, he looks stoic. He's got brown hair that's shaved on the sides um, that is gathered into a a little like man bun um, that's just coming out like he can't keep it in there because it's short enough. But he tries. Um, he's got a scar that goes down his right cheek and through his lip. Uh, brown eyes. They're not unkind, but they're serious. But uh, when he when the redhead sits across from him, he gives a little smile, which kind of looks like a grimace. Uh, and she makes conversation with him without even an issue. Um, there is a dark skinned tiefling with black horns and long uh, with on long black hair that is beautifully curled to perfection with chestnut eyes that sits across from them, completely dressed in black. Ugh, that's um she is very <laughs> hot she sounds so hot <laughs> across from her is an elf that is almost as <clears throat> pale as a sheet of paper okay um like she never sees the light of the sun her hair put back in a ponytail pin straight long that you can tell that it goes way past her her butt um and gray eyes she's wearing a black lace dress and she has long black fingernails and sits there quietly uh at why the... do i feel like that's my daughter's name namesake right there um because it is oh, okay <laughs> because it is um sitting across from her is a dwarf he's tall for a dwarf at like five feet tall um with very handsome features, a strong jaw, a little button nose, blue eyes, and blonde hair. Uh, no beard, which is unusual for a male dwarf, but he does have a little bit of stubble. And you notice that he is missing his left arm. And it She's the been... hottest one on this list. <laughs> it has been replaced with a very extravagant, very well-made mechanical arm. Uh, what 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 is what is the mechanical arm do? Uh, you'll have to what ask him. You'll have to find do. out. <laughs> <laughs> Across from uh, beside him is a little halfling uh, with messy a messy ponytail, that childlike face, freckles everywhere, and light brown eyes. She's almost bouncing in her seat as she talks with him. Uh Across from our little halfling friend is a beautiful, snoo snoo worthy orc woman. Oh God! Oh no! She has her hair half up, half down, in a ponytail with 
loose, but then there's braids that kind of go back with it. She has these amber eyes that stand out very stark against her uh, her green skin. She's wearing um, furs and leather and very uh, hunting worthy clothing. And uh, you see her kind of look over and eye Diana for a moment, but then go back to filling her drink. Muscle mommies appreciate each other. Yeah, she, she, <laughs> you do get that where she looked her up and down. I was like, okay. Um, game recognized game. Yeah. Do I want to fight her or do I want to kiss her? <laughs> or both? Um, down, down from her, across from her is a human male with, again, shaved at the sides, but a long man bun that's very messy, uh, a, a beard kind of around, um, very light beard covering his face and a scar that goes from the corner of his right eye down to his chi- the corner of his chin. Um, and you notice as he goes and grabs something to put on his plate, a bunch of tattoos that go down mm-hmm. his back. Okay, maybe he's the hottest one. <laughs> Can I change my answer? They're all room, hot. Except, like, like, except yeah. the like, small hobbit child. Like Literally everybody else so far has been hot. <laughs> <laughs> the elderly butler with salt and pepper hair and weathered skin is bringing in more food along with um what you assume is a maid with uh her hair Mm. braided her brown hair braided back she's a human they're both human by the way uh with with uh hazel eyes she looks very innocent rosy cheeks she's bringing in food and making sure that everyone has something to eat uh beside our orc mommy is a dark-skinned male with uh, locks that go to his chin. Um, He has these beautiful, big, plush lips and uh, white eyes that you think maybe he might be blind, but you can see him look around the room. And you get the idea that... You get the the sense that maybe he's not. Um, He is butch, very big, muscular, and wearing uh, what leather armor at the moment um and then you see another orc male with these perfectly braided locks um with uh, a bunch of metal jewelry in there he's got he's got very soft features but a an intense look to his face with uh eyes that match his skin color um and scars all over but he's very eccentric looking wearing a bunch of furs and like uh and leather and these uh bits of ribbon or kind of like a cloth that like tie around his chest and his arms and then it's all topped off with a a skull around his neck he wears a skull of a bird hey, and cool. by the time that you have all taken this in dinner has started and you are beginning to eat and you hear from beside you from lady orion a an intake of breath and then her fork clatters to her table to her uh plate loudly and it kind of draws everyone's attention and she's she looks shocked as from the doorway enters one last person. Um, He's got a bit of a tan, these dark, these bright red eyes, long, Mm. dark hair, uh, black and perfect. You know, the waves are perfect. He is gorgeous. And the attention, like he hears that and looks at her and then you see him stop. And look absolutely flabbergasted. And in the next moment, he's standing beside her. Blink of an eye. Pulling her out of the chair. Her arms are wrapped around him. And she bursts into sobs. And you hear from him. I thought you were dead. And she goes, I thought you were dead. (gasps) And there's a moment where he's just... (laughs) got her in an embrace and he says well technically I am and they she takes a moment to look at him 
and goes, what happened? Goes, well, it's a long story. I'll tell you tonight. Oh, well, okay. But when he speaks, give me, uh, give me a perception check. All of us? Anyone who wants to. Yes, I'm paying very close attention to this moment. Uh, I only got a 12, but I have I a... a Scarlet has a 12. I got a, I got a dirty 22. Okay. So anything that's above like a 13, you see when he talks to her and he smiles, he's got fangs. <gasps> but, Sorry, I, I... Who is he talking to again? Who's the woman he's talking to? Lady Orion. Ah. Uh, Okay. Yeah, you look at that face and tell me that guy does not have fangs. Come on. Which one am I looking at? He's got like blood orbs for earrings. He's got his name is Lord and, Bond. Like dark red eyes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Lord Bond Lord Jovi. Bond. Sorry. Bond, Bond Thorn. Thorn. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, he looks like he's gonna suck my blood. He <laughs> probably might if you gave him the chance. No, thanks. I'm good. <laughs> somebody else might be later <laughs> but you see him like he's not letting go of her she's wrapped in her in his embrace you see him pick up her plate and then just move her to the end of the table with him Aww. he doesn't grab anything but hmm. they he are might, he might grab the waiter later <laughs> they are in they're in conversation and that's who's who's at the table with you uh, what are you guys doing as you eat? You doing anything? I think I'm going to lean um, into the party under my breath and kind of say, not unkindly, well, it's good that not everybody in her life is gone. <laughs> it, it seems like she's uh, getting reacquainted with a lot of people. This is a She really hasn't said dinner. hello to anyone else here. Right, but I'm she glad she has someone saw all of the other priestesses and, and things. So yeah, I'm glad she has someone that she's not all alone. Hmm. What was her relationship with the court? Are you asking the prince? No, I'm asking my friends. Like, does anybody um, know? Um, from all she has said, was that. This is her home. Though when I asked her if she knew anybody here, she um, just gave, she said she didn't know. It's been a long time. Can I roll insight on the prince when um, Lady Orion and um, Lord Bond have their moment? Yeah, 100%. A 19. A 19. Okay, so you... When that happens, he's got like a piece of meat that's like going to his mouth, but he stops and uh, places back on the table and just watches this interested, very interested in what's happening. Uh, he didn't expect, you can tell that he didn't expect this reaction from Lord Bond. He doesn't seem to know who Lady Orion is, mm. but he knows Lord Bond and uh, almost looks... He's interested, he wants to know who this person is, but he's happy that his friend is happy. I think Sin will use this kind of as an opportunity to, in a kind of a dinner party kind of way, like, oh, Prince, please tell us, introduce us to all your, so that she can get like the names of everybody and who they are. Yeah. In a very, not mm -hmm. I'm digging for information, but this is polite dinner talk. He looks at you, regards you for a moment, and then goes, perhaps you should um, introduce yourselves to me first. No, her I don't know your like names. She scoots up her chair, stands up, and bows, and goes, I'm Delphra. He nods, looks to uh, Clover, which I know he knows who Clover is. You you introduced yourself. He nods at you, Clover. Um, as that's happening, a a tuna is brought out, like pieces of tuna, and placed in front of you. Um, he looks I, at you. I say... Go ahead. Oh, I I give a very warm smile as a cat, warm smile from a cat. Um, to to the person that <laughs> gave the food to me. Um, and I'll turn back to the prince and just say, I'm I'm so glad to see you in much better spirits than last time we were here. 
Roll me a perception check when you say that. Uh-oh. Hopefully I didn't say the wrong thing. <laughs> As the person putting down your food does so. What? I probably wouldn't know. That's an 11. An 11? You just hear a hmm from the server. She walks off. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> he nods to you and then he looks at uh he looks at you. Um Rosalind. And uh, lean forward. Hello. <laughs> she <laughs> leans forward boobily. <laughs> you put your you, you put your cleavage forward. out. And she leans forward, her her hips breasts. touch the table and they just like, pop out. <laughs> what mean... are so so what do you what do you say? What do you want my name to be? <gasps> And there's a moment he's looking at you for a moment, and then I'm gonna roll for something. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see his composure. That's why. Like, and then, like waiting Sin, for it. Sin is like this. Yeah. You see him. You know what? You see him kind of. <clears throat> your, just your name, please. Dolphers mm. just sitting there whispering and going like, "And you guys thought I would be the problem." <laughs> at least she she kind of like looks at Delphra and got a problem. winks at her. Like, I got this. Um and she says, Rosalind. He, he nods, but then he's like, he's trying to look anywhere that's not you. <laughs> <laughs> As she just like fixes herself a little bit and like then, back. immediately, like his eyes flick for a second and he's like <laughs> has to tell himself no this is going uh, so well and i love it <laughs> he's looking he's looking up to the sky before he looks at you uh sin um a roar of house raven crest of moon's shadow uh roll me insight <laughs> um i got a eight he nods uh and then to you cappy Happy Sirena. That catches his attention. And you can hear your mom's, like, her fork and her Ooh. knife just kind of scratch her plate just the little bit uh, of the fighting Serena. No, actually, I was never one of the fighting Serena's. At that, Torna and Norna are like, what are you talking about? You're always going to be one of the fighting Serena's. Your, your, your family, like, they're immediately, like, back and forth. Like, why would you say that? You, We love you. You know we love you. Why are you being like that? Like, blah, 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 blah. And uh, your mother looks at them and goes, quiet. And they shut up. <clears throat> I, I look to my brothers just kind of like a... I will talk to you later kind of look like please they they look at you and they're like oh we're in trouble <laughs> and they're and they just their heads go down as they start eating um and the prince looks at you and he looks at your mom and he looks at you and he looks at your mom and he goes Maisie would you care to explain and you see her look at you like how could you do this to me Cappy as she looks at the prince and she smiles, she goes, my daughter cursed, unfortunately. And the way that she says that, uh, you could see the prince, like his whole, like his shoulders tighten. He clearly does not like your mom at all. We like It's why we like him. Am I like allowed to like throw my spoon at her and be like, tell the truth? That sounds right. It is up to you. <laughs> that sounds like a thing. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm throwing my spoon at her and just being like, tell the truth. I'm just give, sitting back can, drinking out of give my Give me a ranged we weapon going. attack. Can any of us like roll decks or something to see if we can see what's about to happen and stop the spoon from flying yeah. across the table or stop you can her roll, or something? You can roll uh, insight. First, to see if you realize what's about to happen. Yeah, I'm going to okay. do that too. Oh, shit. Oh, six. I 16. This is in good humor. 
How much did you get? A nat 20. A nat 20. So you realize it, uh, Clover. You're like, oh, shit. And you kind of, like, go to do something. But in the span of seconds, this spoon that was going to her mouth, she just... And right between the eyes, you see... Oh, yes. uh, <laughs> you see Maisie's head just go, bam! And... Yes! Oh, on the inside. Oh, no. yes. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you, ma'am? Thank you. uh, 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 Let me... Dear Prince, I'm sure that you understand... As you're talking to him, by the way, he has got, like, he's had to hide his face because that was the best thing he's ever seen in his life. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'm watching the table. How did they react to this? Were they like, yeah, nice? Uh, They start serving popcorn. Every single one of them is like, Fuck yeah. And Except, um, what about my brothers? Your brothers look absolutely horrified and shocked that this has happened. They're angry, but they're keeping themselves together because they know how to re- uh, act in with people around. <laughs> I don't. It's, yeah, that's, they're still that's drinking the, the Kool Aid. Mm-hmm. I, um, I think I, I have like the slightest smile on my face because I kind of like don't, I don't want to give my mother the satisfaction or to, to i want i want to be composed in, in front of her to be like better than her mm-hmm. um so i kind of i turn to the prince and i'm like i'm sure you understand what it's like to be under the effect of a curse however i am not hurt by mine i'm just he, he different I would love to know more about how this curse may have befallen me. He but nods. unfortunately, I I don't quite quite know. Maybe my mother could could help illuminate the situation. She looks at you and she goes, "How would I know, Cappy? You went out an elf and came back a rabbit." I wonder why I have all of this fey magic. I wonder where that came from. She looks at you. She's like, I am the fey blade, am I not? Hmm. How did you become the fey blade? I. The prince is like, I need popcorn at this. He's like Mm -hmm. leaned forward. I feel like I'm gonna pass some left, like the bowl of pretzels over to him. <laughs> yeah, we're suddenly, all just like, like doing the tennis. The butler match. puts down a uh, bowl of pre- pretzels, like he knows this is getting good, and uh, you pass it over, and he's like, <laughs> "Um, <laughs> your mother looks at you and she goes, Cappy, is this the place for this type of conversation? We're at dinner. Oh, I didn't know it was so sensitive." She ignores you. You see her ignore you, and she looks to the prince, and she goes, uh, Prince Eldrion, I have wondered something. Like, she's trying to change the subject. How come you never took the um, title of king? And at that, the whole table, the whole table goes, <gasps> Sin is going to do a delayed. <gasps> right? <laughs> and she goes, <gasps> Right, right, all right. Uh, and he... <laughs> He looks at her and there's just the promise of pain at some point. Like, he just hates this woman. Uh, And he uh, he says, because I didn't feel like giving up on my parents quite yet. Though I suspect I had a better relationship than your daughter does with you. All the heads turn to Cappy. All the heads turn to Cappy. (laughs) What do you do? (laughs) Uh, just pure composure, just slightest of smiles, eating it up, but not wanting to let anybody have the satisfaction of me being uncivil. Uh, Katie, if you need to run off, you can. Um, we have okay. like oh, 15 sure. minutes left, so. Okay, yeah, I'll be right back. Sorry. Um, yeah, he 
your mother looks cowed. Like that did not go the way she was expecting it to go. And uh, shuts down and begins to eat. Um, what do you guys talk about? Is there anything else? Do you continue pestering her? Uh, at if Not there's right a moment, he'll continue introducing you to people. Yeah, I guess yeah. I think I'm waiting for him to explain who this Lord Vaughn is, but okay, also yeah, curious yeah. about everyone else too. Mm-hmm. So he, the ghost that you met, is still kind of uh, floating beside him, and uh, he says, "This is Lady Seraph." She was a great sorcerer in her time. Uh, he looks to the redhead that uh, Rosalind had taken his, the seat of. And he says, this is Galen, um, my cousin. She runs the, the library mm. we have here. Uh, the tiefling. He points to and he goes, um, this is Lilith, Darkwater. Uh, a thief caught in the palace at the time everything happened. Uh, and then he goes to the elf with the long white hair. He goes, um, Morgana. Uh, she is the Oracle of the Veil. Vale. She spends most of her time in the, what was it? believe it was the chamber of eternity the fifth room the fifth uh level that you were the West worried Bank. about uh he points to the dwarf so this is baldrick he is our artificer he spends most of his time in the forge he waves at you guys hi <laughs> <laughs> uh he points to the half like he goes, this is uh, Sylvia, our bard, our resident bard. Um, he points to Orc Mommy, number two. Lady Marigold, uh, keeper of the night blooms. She tends our small garden. And to the man with the tattoos all down his neck. Brother Oswald. He spends most of his time in the crypts. Uh... He points to his butler and he goes, this is Roderick, our butler. And the butler bows. He points to uh, the dark-skinned male with the dreads. And he goes, this is Sir Cedric Ironheart, our captain of the guard. Or was. And then he points to uh, he points to the male orc. And he goes, this is Grim, uh, our alchemist. And the Grim is in his own little world right now, kind of pushing peas around his plate, uh, completely not paying attention to any of this. And then finally, he uh, he points to the man at the end of the table with Lady Orion. He goes, this is Lord Bonthorn. And that's all he says about it. And uh, finally, when the maid comes back in, he goes, and this is, he pauses, he looks at you all, and I'm going to roll to see how much of a shit disturber he is right now. And he's going to roll in the shit disturber category, where he goes, and this is Evelyn. And he looks at Evelyn and he goes, perhaps you should take the night off. And she looks confused. And then she looks at you, and she looks confused. And you see her put something together and she scowls at you and she drops oh, the plate. Is, is that the, is that the maid okay. that was smirking or what? Yes. The little, yeah. And she looks at you and she, there's just a sneer of just utter hatred as she drops the plate she's carrying almost on you guys and picks up her, her skirts and walks away. He goes, you killed her husband on the first time you were here. Hmm. That, that is us? so unfortunate. Apologies. I don't remember. Did he deserve it? That doesn't feel like something we would do. Um, it's definitely it's, something <laughs> I would do. <laughs> if you remember, in the first little bit, the first time you got there, there were guards 
trying to stop you from going through. Oh, and they yeah. said, and they said, please go home. Don't come this way. If you come this way, we have to fight. Go home. And you guys were like, well, we're coming through. That, yeah, that was that was his choice. Then, like, get fucked. That is unfortunate. Has, has Such... she left the room already? Yes. Do you say that though, Delphra? Get fucked. Yeah, that was his choice. Get fucked. Is that something you said, or is that something that Delphra said? Uh, something Delphra would say. <laughs> when you say that, the whole table changes. And they look at you like you are one of the worst people they've ever met. I just kind of like look at everyone. I'm like, hey, listen, we lifted the curse. We helped. Clover was a big part of this. And if he didn't, he didn't have to die, but we had to come in. So one death, comparatively speaking, to your whole city? Delphra. Oh, no. One death is the world to someone. And we caused that death. But how many more no, deaths not... did we prevent? Oh. Okay, Thanos. You cannot weigh people's <laughs> lives against each other. Each life is worth <clears throat> each life is worth an infinite amount. Casualties of war are Inevitable? always to be mourned. <clears throat> no. <clears throat> I'm not I don't mean, and I, when I'm you not when you I say that mean, listen, I when don't you mean, say that. When you say casualties of war are always to be mourned, um, you hear another slam on the table if someone slams their fists on it. And um, it is our very weathered-looking groundskeeper, Grimsby. And he goes, what war? We existed in our own realm until you came here. What war? I'm gonna like look at the prints and like, are they not filled in? We we didn't come unprovoked. He looks at you and he goes, I think you came with very little information as to what actually happened. That's entirely possible. That true. That's actually that why we true. are here. We want to know what exactly is happening because and i'm gonna kind of look at clover for like is it okay if i mm? our country has not been forthright with us in fact i'm pretty sure they sent us here to our deaths and we're not really interested in dying we are interested in finding out what happened and we are not interested in any more casualties can i roll an insight on my and... mom when she says that yes while she's doing that, uh, Rosalind just says, they think we're disposable, but you don't think we're disposable, do you? I asked you not to it, come. I asked, I did not want to fight you. We I were not sent to here. The curse. We, we sent were not sent here by choice. We, we were sent here against our will. And your highness, for a little bit of context... Prior to us coming here this time, this second time, uh, Aurora is correct, Sid is correct, in that we, we found out that there's a lot of things about our own country that we don't know about, including upheavals in the religion, which have thrown doubt upon a lot of things that we have been taught, a lot of dare I say, propaganda. And so certainly when you say that, possibly more. When you say that, a lot of pop propaganda, it's at this moment where Lady Orion will uh, speak up. And she says, um, fuck, I forgot her last name. Hang on, I gotta, I gotta get it. Unless anyone finds it first. I thought Orion was her last name. Uh, yeah, there's gotta be a first <clears throat> name then. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Lady, Lady O. Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's all I gave myself. Um, she that's goes, all I've got. Mm -hmm. she looks at him and she goes, My name is Lady Orion, and I am the priestess of Nixaria. And when he, when she says that, you can see the recognition of who she is now kind of go through 
him. And he looks confused for a moment and then he nods and he says to her, welcome home. And he looks back at you all and he goes, do you know where the moonstone actually comes from? We know what the temple told us. And I think Sin would know whatever the temple would have told us. Yeah. Um, It was a gift from Luna. Okay. But I am going to make it known that it's what the temple told us. Like I'm suggesting I'm all ears, daddy of darkness. (laughs) (laughs) He looks at you. He looks at everyone. And he, he, he goes thousands, thousands of years ago. Moonstone was not given to Solstitia. It was given to Umberfell from Nixaria. When we flourished, it was stolen. But rather than start a war, we continued on. Until he looks, you can see it pass over him just sorrow until a plague such as one we had never seen spread through our country sent by something divine spread through and he looks like he can't believe he still can't believe it it's been hundreds of years and he still can't believe it or not it's been like a hundred years so he still can't believe it he goes eye contact you your eyes would turn a silver and then you had three days before a very painful and excruciating death took you your soul was burnt from your body and you had no afterlife after that why do I feel like this is from Luna? Silver eyes. He looks at you and he goes, do you say that? Yeah. He, because it was. <clears throat> I lost that my family. Bitch. And he goes, I tried to tell you the first time you were here. Delpha just kind of stands up and goes, like, walks up to him, like, very, very gently. And like, you can, you can see him stiffen. Like, what, head what do you down, do? like, head down, like, shy, and goes, I'm sorry, and then gives him a hug. There's, like, he doesn't know what to do for a second, and then you see him just very awkwardly pat your back. Thank you. And uh, then Quartzly, Quartzly kind of, like, just goes around and, like, curls up on his lap and pushes his chair back a little so he can fit. At that, he relaxes, and he ends up petting the fox. Uh, And he goes... Millions of people died. Millions. This is what is left. And is the plague we... the shadow curse? And that's where he chokes just a little bit. He goes, No, that was my doing. I lost everybody. We lost millions of people. I tried to stop it. I I played with magics I should not have. Well, the only place that was safe. His... Sorry. Oh, you do that. You you grab his hand and he is not used to feeling this comfort, but takes it and goes, the only people left alive were people in the castle at the time. And that's like, he's, he doesn't know where to look at this moment. And your stupid ass fucking mother sits forward and goes, that's so heartbreaking. My heart aches for you. And he just, (sighs) like, he just can't stand her. I'm I'm just going to say, your bodyguard has a lot of opinions. (laughs) He he looks at you and he goes, Oh, you mean the so, the Solandrian ambassador? Because now that there is no curse here in these lands, now we deserve help. 
Delphi just looks at Cappy's mom and goes, I still have a fork. Um, and she <clears throat> looks at you like, oh, she gonna find you in the shadows one night? Like, <laughs> of course, like, from like, the prince's lap just hisses at her again. He's getting so many scritches. Actually, the prince is feeding him off his plate. Oh, The prince is an animal Highness. guy. It, it sounds like not only were we misinformed, but that Salandria has acted despicably towards you and yours. Was, and I am so very sorry was the plague... for the harm that has been caused. He reaches over and scratches you. What's the plague? Is the plague assumed to be Salandria's doing, or is this a natural divine phenomenon? Sin is going into like uh religious lore. Yeah. Uh like, like she's like, I gotta go to the library after this. This is really <laughs> he, bizarre. He looks at you and he says, There was nothing like this ever seen before. It was resistant to every magic we had. Something only the gods could have sent down. If you wouldn't yes, mind. Yes, I'm pissing off a god. Highness, after dinner, after accommodations, if I might peruse your library, I am a priestess of Luna, though I am soul-bound to Nixaria, and uh, I find you this catch his attention with that. What? Hmm? What? Is that so? Wait, what? <laughs> uh, this what? is the first time you're telling him that you're soul bound. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, I thought I. Oh, I thought. <laughs> no, I don't yeah. say that. But that's that's the look on like. Oh. Well, what guys? What do you think I'm atoning for? We don't know. Uh, you don't talk to us. No, no, you all were too polite to ask. <laughs> That there's that too. <laughs> it's it's uh, I mean, a little personal. Um, you're, are you still holding his hand? Yeah. Uh, he gives you a little squeeze, and he yeah, says, no. "Not letting go until." Why he dies. are you here this time? Do there's an official, the official answer, answer? <laughs> and then there is the actual answer. How about both? officially to retrieve the moonstone which has recently been restolen right in front of us yep. to which we were blamed imprisoned and now sent here on a death march <clears throat> clearly who stole it nixaria well someone so... who looked like right no 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 it's not me saying it was her it's but the so a form appearing as yes. our high priestess transformed into a form that looked like nixaria uh she Aurora? is Yes. Could you tell? Could Whether I tell if that was her? Oh, you were so bound. I... I. You don't even have to roll. You had no clue. I honestly, I am so. I. She essentially she owns me. She gave me a piece of her power in a very dire situation, and I foolishly took it. But at the time. No, I don't regret it. It was an important thing, and I, I needed, I was in need. And that's why I came back to the temple. I was there to atone, because I know it is blasphemous, or at least I thought it was, until Lady Orion appeared in our lives and threw everything on our heads. Um, Nixaria is not very kind to me. She toys with me, taunts me. I think it makes her happy to see me struggle. And she doesn't like Luna very much. Would you? She's been dragged here from her home and soul bound to this place. That's the thing. We know nothing of whatever you just said. All we know is that Nixaria is the evil sister of Luna and that her doctrine is blasphemous. Anyone who worships her is evil. That is all we are told. It is forbidden to look at it to research it that is how we've and, been raised and to add to that the the reason that we were sent here in particular to look for information about the moonstone is because that is because i'm a felon tenebrosa 
worship Nixaria. It was assumed by the people that sent us, by the queen, by the head of our church, that this would be the place to find information about where Nixaria had taken the moonstone. That's the official he, answer as to why we're here. When you say that, Lady Orion adds, I think there might be a convergence happening, a, a, an eclipse of sorts. And uh, you see him take a minute. And he goes, okay, um, I know a story. And uh, he's going to he's gonna pour himself a glass of wine, take a sip of it, and goes, so the Moonstone is not a Salandrian artifact. It belonged to Umberfell, taken by your country. And I think Nixaria, with it, can perform a ritual of separation. Um, a spell of immeasurable power that can only happen, I mean, once every few thousand years. Uh, Separation. The night, the night of the Convergence. Um, a time where the veil between worlds is the weakest. Uh, I know not the purpose of the ritual. I assume maybe to separate herself from Luna. But I know even in the time of the next the next celestial converge I don't know the next time he sorry that's me because I I know not the time of the next celestial convergence soon I think but that's your deadline if you're looking to stop her um, and you must stop her because the world can't the world can't survive without both of them what do you I mean? think so does she want to kill Luna, or does she want to just separate her? Like, do they want to be two I, individuals? Again, I am not privy to that information. But I, I, curiosity killed the cat. Would it be so not horrible? Our cat, no, no, not our cat. Um, would it be so horrible if they became different entities and not Ooh. solely seen as one? Yeah, I one actually cannot survive don't. without the other. But they if, would both still be living. I don't know that they would. Are, is Nixaria not aware of this? Does she not care for her own preservation? Perhaps she's just finished. Do you not want that to happen? You do, you do worship Nixaria here. The moon would rip apart and fall to Estelia. The damage would be a oh well an extinction level extinction level event. All right. Well, I think we need to go get ourselves a moonstone. I think I have something that might help you. Beneath the grounds of the castle is a labyrinth of shadows, a maze of darkness and illusion it's protects some of Tembrose's greatest treasures uh, the planetarium of destiny it's said to predict the movements of the planets and the stars it's said to predict the fate of the future itself so if you seek answers perhaps that is where you start Delphor just kind of looks at him and, like, very shyly just kind of goes, can it tell us about the past? What do you search for? Anything. If there's something specific you look for, perhaps some of us can help you. And he looks at Morgana. The Oracle is quite skilled in divination. And Delphi just kind of looks at her and goes and like gives her like this slight nod, like kind of indicating like I'm gonna go see you at one point. She nods. 
but tonight and he, that's when he realizes that he's still holding your hand he he lets go uh and and you see him fix himself like he's been he's been far too open with you guys tonight um i will give you guest quarters is that amenable that is more than gracious your highness he nods. Doctor just kind of raises her hand. Can we just be far away from Maxie so that I am not imprisoned? Yes. Beautiful. Um, I don't mind. I don't mind being a little closer. Just uh, throwing that out there. When you guys, Mister Pointy, is a little bit closer. <laughs> I'm gonna get you to your rooms, and then we'll like we'll call the session. Okay. Uh, Are there, is there going to say dancing, something to the though, prince just... first? <laughs> uh, what would you like to say to the prince? I want to say this quietly. This is only for him and maybe my sisters to hear. So here's what he's going to do. He's going to, when you're finished, he's going to, um, the mood is not for dancing tonight. It seems like everybody's very tense. Um, he's going to take you with him to the third floor and you have the opportunity to sidle up next to him. Prince, um, you may already have thought of this, but I have a feeling that what has transpired tonight may be something that my mother, the ambassador, would want to make sure got back to Salandria. And we are probably in agreement that that shouldn't happen. He, I won't lie that I have personal reasons I would like to see this happen, but it's probably a good idea to, in some way, restrict her movement. Considers you for a moment. Um, and you see his eyes flare with that red that he had when he cast magic the first time you met him. And he goes, don't panic. And then there's a uh, a whoosh of like this shadow magic that he still seems to have and it you see the windows cover black nothing in or out tonight can i um i is he a sorcerer can i roll an arcana or something to check you are welcome to roll an arcana check yes A uh, 10. A 10? You're not sure, but he didn't seem to cast a spell. Mm -hmm. Um, So he takes you to the third floor. And uh, he leads you to your guest quarters. Each one of you have a separate room. Uh, I'll describe them for you. Uh, just one of them, but like... You step into the guest quarters, nestled on the third floor of the Black Spire... A space designed for visiting adventurers such as yourself. Uh, I like wrote a whole like. <laughs> uh, amidst their, you know, from their perilous journeys, uh, the chamber exudes a peculiar comfort, uh, blending its elements of his of hosp hospitality with um, unmistakable air of uh, almost confinement. Now, especially with the uh, windows blacked out. As you enter, you'll notice dim lighting that permeates the room. Uh, it casts a soft glow on dark tapestries that adorn the wall. Each tapestry kind of tells a story, hinting at the castle's past. Um, the beds are lavish. Uh, they will be the type of bed that you get in and you just sink into and don't want to get out of. Um, the windows, if any, are desolate views or would be desolate views of the outside but are now black um and it's a sort of juxtaposition of the comfort and then the looming shadows you can tell that it's supposed to be nice but this place has been twisted but he'll give you each a room there are baths in there and vanities and things to keep yourselves well kept uh, and by the time he gets to your room, R Rosalind, he's going to stop you very gently. And he goes, look, do not go wandering 
around the castle at night. As much as you may want to, it's not safe. Is that understood? If the castle isn't safe, maybe you should keep me safe? Um, I'm gonna roll. I'm roll me persuasion, and I'm gonna roll to see how My well how much that favorite, affects him. Favorite thing is to make you panic. <laughs> I just went. I like. What is he gonna do? I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't like this character sheet that makes me annoyed. Okay, we're gonna do actual D and D tonight. D and D denial dice, and it's a little modifier. I'm not very persuasive. Um, it's 15. That's the DC. Um, <laughs> he, uh, <clears throat> he goes, if you would like to accompany to my room, you are more than welcome. I... And then there's almost a little blush. <laughs> does, she, does she have to roll for who's louder too? <laughs> <laughs> oh flat out it will be Roz like it will like, be Roz I'm not gonna lie to you can it will be hear? Roz can we it will hear be. From no our he's, rooms? he's like on like the ninth oh. floor uh, like <clears throat> so he if he'll take his hand he'll put a hand out if you want to accompany him now is your chance otherwise you go yeah. to the bed for the night she will take his hand he looks you up and down kind of smiles a little bit and then pulls you with him. And uh, that's what we'll call the session. <laughs> yeah! GG! 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 We will see you guys not next week, but the week after, as we play only play three nights, or three, yeah, Saturdays a month. Uh, I'm my sneeze stars, and I have been your shenanigan sovereign. Um... Uh, Kathy. <laughs> Hi, I am Star, and you can find me at Star Mama C on TikTok. You can also find me everywhere else. That's Threads and Blue Sky and Instagram and every yeah, just uh, there's too many of them right now. Um, but everything you can find everything if you go to characterswithoutstories.com, which is my podcast where I talk to people and I ask them about characters they haven't had a chance to play yet. Um, so please go check it out and I am going to pass it over to Mommy Kalik. Hello, I'm Mommy Kalik. I play Delphra and, um, once again, I live under a rock and you can't find me anywhere and I like my little hole of darkness. Uh, go ahead, Scarlet. Hello, I am Scarlet, and I play D&D here all the time on Twitch. In fact, I'm playing tomorrow on my channel where I'm playing Out of the Abyss, my two years long campaign. I am the dungeon master. Uh, I also am the mother of dessert dragons, and you can find my brand new cookie dragon stickers on my shop. And I will be putting out all my orders on Monday. So get your orders in and I will have that out to you. Who's Who hasn't gone? Who hasn't gone? Katie. Katie. And hi, uh, Katie. I'm Dungeon Mistress Katie and all the things. Um, you can find me on TikTok and um, all of the other types of social media as Dungeon Mistress Katie. And yeah, I've been Rosalind and um, this is fun. <laughs> Juniper. Um, I'm Juniper, Linden and Spice on TikTok and Blue Sky and other places. Um, I'm playing Alien tomorrow night on the Shattered Tabletop Games channel uh, on Twitch. It's uh, Session Zero for Season 2, so great time to join. And uh, I've played Clover tonight, our little kitty cleric. Back to I Sneeze Stars. Um, I think that we will see you guys Good in week. two weeks uh, where we wake up with rosalind in the prince's arms <laughs> uh giving him the time of his <clears throat> life for the first time in very many years That's um I'll dry him. spell broken dry <laughs> spell broken pent up you had a good time uh we will see you guys next time bye bye bye
Sit by the 